<laughs> How y'all doing this evening? We're good. 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 good, good, good. good, good. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, this is Ishanda, Ishanda Blue and Jessica Wright. They are the founders and creators of is it innovative with innovative senior solutions? That's right. Okay. How many years? So before we go ahead and get started, you all go ahead and tell me a little bit about you. Tell everybody a little bit about yourselves. Okay. Go ahead. Share the story. Okay. So we're registered nurses. We're sisters. Um, we both have experience working in long-term care. I, I know I've worked in nursing homes really all of my life. And um, for us, about 14 years ago, 15 years ago, our grandmother got where she could no longer walk. And um, so she couldn't stay home by herself. And um, she told me and my sister, she said, I do not want to go to a nursing home. And so uh, we didn't want her to go to a nursing home because we knew the challenges that she would face. We wanted her to stay home where she would have a better quality of life, maintain her dignity. But, you know, most importantly, that was her choice. That's what she wanted. So we wanted that for her. And so we started hiring companies on Actually, at the time, it was nobody locally. Uh, we were hiring companies from Columbus and Griffin, Georgia, and um, to um, provide um, caregiver service um, to our grandmother. And a lot of times the caregivers showed up. And of course, we're not riding to Columbus to go meet with someone, right? So anyway, we, we saw a need. We saw a need in our community. And so our grandmother became our first client. And so that's how we got started with our own senior care business. Um, as we got into the senior care business, like I said, we started doing in-home care. Um, we started going to different associations and our mission, by the way, is to keep seniors safe in their home or community as long as possible. So we start learning about other ways, um, seniors in the community. And so that's when we do an adult day, personal care homes, transportations. These are still all services to keep seniors um, in the home or community longer. Um, there's a need for nursing home, but that is for people who need 24 hour skill care. Everybody else need to be home. So um, anyway, we just, we started in 07. We grew to over a hundred caregivers. Um, I think we had at uh, one point over 200 clients. Um, in 2019, we sold our in-home care business for over a million dollars. And then um, we got a million over a million you said over a million. Mm -hmm. And wow. then we pivoted when we did that, we pivoted. And that's when we started consulting to help people start their own senior care business. And um, so that was in 2020. Mm -hmm. And um, this year, I think we um, purchased over 26 personal care homes. 26 properties and flip them for personal care homes. And um, our goal is to help a hundred. So um, we're halfway, you know, we're, we're almost there. We're trying to get there. So anyway, that's a little bit about our story. So now we're helping people start their own senior care business. We're focusing in on um, adult day and personal care homes, specifically personal care homes that are the residential style three bedroom, two bath home that are nestled into the community. They don't stand out. They look like a home me and you would live in. Um, we found out those work best for seniors and it's another way to keep them in the community and it's not an institutional setting um, for them. So that's just a little bit. Did I leave anything out? I think you hit everything. <laughs> Go ahead, I'm gonna ask you all um, some questions now. With regard, because I know this is on a lot of people's minds, how how has this played? How has the senior care niche played into how has COVID impacted it? Because I know that there's some there's some fear there. I know there's some questions there. How has it impacted the senior care industry? Um just as Ishanda just stated, we just helped 26 entrepreneurs enter into this space. So there is a need. Um, just starting with Ishanda and I, we um, started a 24-bed personal care home in March of last year directly 
in the start of COVID. Um, we had been working on our home and COVID hit and we was like, what are we going to do with a brand new 24 bed personal care home? And so we, um, we opened up our home as a refuge for recovering COVID-19 clients. Um, we are in Albany, Georgia. Um, if anybody remembers, Albany was a hot spot um, in the start of the pandemic. And we heard our local officials, we heard our state officials, we heard the federal, um, that it was a need um, to get open beds in the hospital. They were full and they needed places for recovering COVID um, clients to go. And also we were getting calls from our community, people in our community who had COVID and they could no longer take care of their loved ones. They needed a place for them to go. They were at home, but they couldn't take care of them because they had got COVID. And so mm -hmm. we were able to use our 24 bed personal care home as a um, refuge for COVID. Um, again, we have helped um, six um, entrepreneurs start their open and start their um, personal care home in the midst of COVID. They're completely full. Um, our beds are almost full. We have like four openings. So every month we're um, admitting new clients. And so there's a need. And so, you know, I always like to talk about the statistics, right? Because we all know the numbers do not lie. <laughs> and so um, the senior care population is the largest growing population. It's the largest population in the in the United States. Over 10,000 individuals turn age 65 every day. And um, 72 million individual seniors are going to need housing mm -hmm. in 2030. And that's going to go up to 88 million by 2050. So the next 20 to 30 years, the senior care industry will be booming. So this is the place to be um, for um, anyone who wants to enter into this space. Um, they are calling it the silver tsunami. And so we all know what a tsunami is. It's huge, it's massive, it's disruptive. <laughs> I'm telling you, this is what is happening in the senior care industry. It's the place to be. So I have a lot of questions and I'm realizing that a lot of people, I know I had gotten some questions beforehand, but Roman asked, um, and you all can see the question right here that popped up, where do you find these clients? We teach you how to market. You have to market just like McDonald's, just like Nike, just like everything else. You have to market your service. You have to get to the gatekeepers. You have to make sure they know you're available. And we also have a community. That's one of the great things about working with us. We have started a senior care business community where we um, have a membership program and we actually connect we share referrals. For instance, if we're if we're full, we send referrals to somebody else and the same thing in our community. And so that's one of the ways that we work to work together um, in our community to get clients. But yeah, you do have to market for your clients. And let me just share this um, tidbit. You know, we're in Southwest Georgia. We're in rural Georgia. Um, and we have made over 19 million in sales in our lifetime of being in business. And so this is the place to be. I mean, if I'm sure we have people on tonight that are in a population, our population is 15,000. 15, yeah, 15,000. And that's so I know we have individuals that are in um, cities that have huge, way larger population than ours. So if we can do it in rural Georgia. Yeah. It's, it's not going to be an issue of clients. It's, it's a 75 percent need of providers in this space. Can I share this too, Gerald? We, we have a nursing home. We have a nursing home here. Um, I think it's like 200 plus beds. It's a big community. They are full. The nursing home is full. Where are these clients going to go? You know, all the homes that we have open right now are full. So there's a there's just such a need the clients are there the clients are there now you all heard all of you that are chiming in 19 million with a small small population guys right somebody said wow yeah 
Another person asked, um, what states are you working in? Obviously, Georgia. And what certifications are required? In Arizona, a licensed, uh, a state licensed assisted living manager license is required. What is the barrier of entry nationally? So every state is different. Every state has different um, qualifications to start your senior care business. Um, you know, I can tell you that we've been working with a lot of people in other states. I want to say half of those 26 homes that we started, half of those people are coming from out of state mm -hmm. into this state because it's just easier to do business. Our rules and regulations are not as strict as other states. So again, I would just um, reiterate every state is different. You're right. Some states require that the owner actually take some type of administrator owner um, or management exam. Um, from what we've seen from that exam, it's not anything um, hard. Hard. You don't have a healthcare professional. You just have to study the material and take the exam, exam that's required by the state. Um, but like I said, every state has diff they're pretty much the same, but they have some different nuances. Um, and I hear California, I know it specifically is really different than a lot of other states. Um, but you would have to research your state information. Okay, before I go ahead, and I know a lot of people. So how can you use real estate to start your senior care business? So I'm going to frame that into this. So do I have to go out as an investor and physically buy or purchase real estate? Do I have to, let's say, credit qualify to go ahead and buy a piece of real estate? Or just can I go ahead and do what people in Airbnb do, which is they go ahead and they lease somebody else's property? Mm -hmm. You can do both. So we that's actually what we're doing. When we, when we buy those homes, we're not buying them for us to operate. We're leasing it to other people so that they can start their senior care business. So that's one option. And two, and then you could, if you already have property, let's just say you already got property and um, you're having some issues with tenants or whatever the case may be, or it's vacant. I don't, you know, you just got property that you need to monetize. That's one way you can use your property that you already have. And then if you're really interested, like we are, you can actually buy, you can buy property and get started in the senior care industry. So you have several options there. So we all know what's going on in the market right now, right? With regards to the eviction crisis, right? A lot of people in the process of getting put out on the street. Mm -hmm. Would you say that the senior care niche, the way I'm reading it, would you say that could be a potential solution to a lot of these individuals that have property that have to do away with these tenants? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, yes. Yeah. And, you know, um, in the senior care industry um, where, you know, maybe as a uh, renter, um, you get maybe fifteen hundred, two thousand, you know, maybe a month from your tenant. You're going to in the senior care, you can buy six, seven times that um, twelve thousand a month. Yeah. Yeah. Twelve. So. Let's let's take let's take the example that you had before a three bedroom two bath house. Mm -hmm. Give me an example of what what type of income would be generated from something like that. What what if you can give and I know in different areas you can probably charge different that I don't know but give That's an example fine. of what somebody can cash flow from something like that. Yeah. And then I want to go back and add something else to this other question. But in Georgia now for Medicaid, if you participate in a Medicaid uh, reimbursement program, a three bedroom, two bath home that's big enough to take six residents can generate around ten thousand dollars a month. And for and that's if Medicaid. Now, if you do private pay, that's where you can set your rates and charge more money. And that can go up to $15,000 a month. However, the private pay niche, you got to have private pay amenities, right? You know, these people are paying private pay and that's what they're expecting, private rooms, private bathrooms and things of that nature. However, you can just, you know, our niche, the little niche that we found is, you know, we do the three bedroom, two bath house. They have semi-private rooms. 
and we we do the Medicaid reimbursement. We like Medicaid. You know, we don't have to worry about our payments. We don't have to go looking for our payments. We get paid on time every time. So that's the revenue. Um, go I'm ask another, oh, mm -hmm. go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, because you had another. You had yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I want to point out too with um with personal care homes and senior care, specifically personal care homes, the seniors usually stay seven plus years. We had clients. I know we've had we got clients that's been with us over seven years. So my point is, it's not a high turnover. Once you admit a client into your home, they're there to live unless something happens, if they have a change in condition mm -hmm. or hopefully they're not unhappy. But if you're making sure they're happy, you're providing services, those clients will be with you for a very long time. So I don't know how it looks when you rent property to just renters. But like I said, these, these this is a long term care placement for seniors. That's a lot of because, uh, you know, in, in on YouTube now over 50,000 we have now I have over 50,000 subscribers now in the Facebook group a little 40,000 and one of the biggest things that I get on a weekly basis is I have a property I have a problem I need to evict and what's the real solution now a lot of these people are renting for 1500 2000 dollars a month lots of times less than that mm. so and I have someone in mind I don't want to say the young lady's name, um, uh, where it sounds like one property, if not two, would actually achieve her goals. So give me your biggest success story. Give me your biggest success story. I'm curious about it. I went ahead and wrote that down last minute. Give me your biggest success story between either you all or one of your clients. Um, you know, any model, um, this six, the uh, three bed, two bath is a six figure business. Um, I mean, just off the off the rip, it's a six figure business, and you know that that speaks for itself. So we've had a client. Um, he has a, a criminal justice background. So no, you do not have to be a healthcare professional. Um, he has a criminal um, justice background. He has a home. Um, he uh, in his background, he in criminal justice, he um, dealt with mail. So he has a home just for males and it's completely full. It was full. We we say six months. He was full within three months um, and he um, is profiting over 45 percent of his of his of his money you know most businesses is what 25 15 to 25 percent profit mm -hmm. in this model we're um we're saying you can profit up to 45 50 percent let me add to him too um also he go works a nine to five because his clients are going during the day doing a day at a day center he works a nine to five and he is the caregiver for his home. So he actually has a room in his personal care home. So the personal care home is also paying his living expenses. Um, and he's able to still work and he has income coming in for his residents that are living at his home. That is a success story. <laughs> and, you know, and it's funny because that was one of my questions that I was going to go ahead and because I wasn't sure if. So let's say, for instance, like you have a three bedroom house and it's just you where you can go ahead and essentially rent rooms is what you're saying. You can go ahead and, and well, rent or lease rooms. Right. Or well, it, has would it, be licensed. it has to be licensed license. for a personal care home. And it has to be licensed for that number of beds. The key number is six. You don't want to do it for under six okay. um, residents. So. Um, because you're going to have to have one. It's got to be one caregiver there. That caregiver can be the owner or you can hire someone. So you can make it passive income or you can be the one in the home. It's up to you. Uh, Mr. Hester. Hey, Mr. H Mr. Mr. Hester. Um, they asked the question, do you help with the step by step to hire staff properly and the right type of property? So we are, matter of fact, hold on before you all start, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Mr. Hester, if I'm not mistaken, I believe you deal in fix and flips. Am I right? You can go ahead and chime in me with the chat. I believe he deals with fix and flips. However, um, 
I think that this model, seeing that it being a potential six figure, um, six figure annual model can be more, even as much, if not more attractive than many of you all that are fixing and flipping right now. I tell people all the time, think about holding some of this property that you have. Don't just wholesale everything. Don't just fix and flip everything. Buy and hold some of this stuff correctly. Mm-hmm. You all help with the staffing and everything and how to get the right property, the right people. You guys help with that? We don't. Um, so when we have a membership program where we do coaching and we do bi-monthly coaching and in that coaching program, we talk about strategies to help with staffing and things of that nature. Now, finding the right type of property, that will be more of a consulting. We have um, two options there. We have a one-on-one consulting where we can help um, individuals one-on-one, or we have a coaching program, a six-week coaching program that you can go through and learn more in-depth information about starting your home. So those are the two options that we have. So this is the thing. Um, why is now the time to invest? Why now in the middle of a pandemic or coming through a pandemic? Why now? Uh, well, we showed you the numbers, um, <laughs> the, the numbers, this is the industry to be in, um, the need of providers, um, a 75% need of providers, um, I mean, for the next 20 to 30 years, this is this is just going to grow. So this is no fly by night industry. Mm -hmm. You know, you can um, this is the time to enter in. It hasn't even crest yet. You know, we're saying 2030, 2050. So the time is now to get in um, the senior care industry and ride the wave up, you know. So um, I would say now is the time to position yourself. That's right. So those of you that are in YouTube, okay, and those of you that are on Facebook, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into the group. I'm going to send you all the ladies' contact information so that you all can go ahead and reach out to them. I just went ahead. I just shot it in the chat, okay? I'm going to give you all the email, the phone number, the website. Take the time to really think about this particular model and potentially doing away with the traditional rental model. The reason I say that is this, and I knew it, I was talking to a good friend of mine uh, several years ago, and we were talking about uh, senior assisted living facilities. Now this is before you all, before um, you all found out about TSP. <laughs> and it's, it's interesting because when I was living in California, I knew of somebody that was just destroying the business. I mean, making money hand over fist. I just didn't know the formula. And if you and, and the cost of doing it incorrectly, right? You're setting yourself up for failure. Right. So I see uh, is LeBron here. He's uh continue to give me comments. So check this out. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna leave these young ladies, I'm gonna leave their contact information, YouTube and in Facebook. You all take the time to go ahead and reach out to them. Okay, they are a wealth of information. I'm going to have them back inside the Facebook group, okay? Because the information is second to none, guys. So any last words that you all have for this audience? I mean, I'm sitting here. I'm about to go ahead and run upstairs, talk to my wife. <laughs> we'll talk about some things. Um, <laughs> any last words you got for these followers? Um, we would like to drop... Um some links in the chat, if that's okay, um, of some um, our coaching and our um, turnkey um, where you all can join. Um, and hopefully we can maybe come on to your group and do a, um, a master class. Um, but we can go ahead and drop those links in there um, where they can register and learn um, a little bit more um, but we want to take out all the guesswork. You know, we have been doing this over 14 years. Um, so we have the proven systems. You know, um, we can point you in the right direction. Um, so you don't have to um, go against barriers and um, hearing no from the state. You know, it doesn't matter what state you are. We can coach you. We can help you enter into this space. Again, um, as Ishana stated, it's our goal, um, our mission to help um, 
at least 100 entrepreneurs enter into this space. And so, um, you know, you all you all have the property. Um, we want to help you monetize it and, and also meet a need. So not only will you be financially, but you're also meeting the need in your community. And so what better um, way than that um, of making a, a, um, a positive impact in your community? I guess, and I know Jessica Moore hit the financial side and the business side. I'm going to hit the the need for this type of care. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, I've worked in nursing homes all my life. Um, institutional living is a different way of living for seniors. And uh, we've just seen the positive effects, even with COVID. Like mm -hmm. a lot of people don't even want to put their family members in a nursing home because of the outbreaks. So these small communities is the way to go for seniors. Um, it's a better um, quality of life for them. Like I said, the homes, the homes that we choose are homes that, are, you know, I would want to live in. So we want to make sure that we're putting seniors in quality homes and quality communities um, and improving their care. So I just want to come from a standpoint of um, it really improved the lives of seniors um, when we do this and it gives them more options. So. Uh, it's, it's funny you say that me and my sister, we were just talking about our mother uh, who lives in Charlotte, North Carolina. And I, you just gave me a thought uh, with regards to my mother and starting to set her up. And it's funny because I never thought about that before until now. So anyways, guys, thank you for being on. You said you wanted to go ahead and drop some links. Do you have a, um, a chat on your side where you can go ahead and drop links into the chat or what you can do? is to go ahead and drop it inside the Facebook group, no problem. Uh, I'm gonna also take whatever links you all have, I'm gonna go ahead and drop them on YouTube as well, as well as in my couple of my other private Facebook groups as well, guys. So um, thank you. I can see the comments. Thank you all for this opportunity. It's not just about, it's funny because we sit here, we talk about, uh, you know, the. I sit here and I run a real estate investing community and I talk about, making money but you have to you all have to understand something it's not just about making money it's about making a difference at the same time okay yeah. and that's important that's the key okay so thank you all very much i hope to have you all back soon and guys give me a second i'm gonna drop all those links in the description in the comment section etc cetera, etc cetera, okay you all thank you very much Thank, Thank you, you for, for having, having us. us. <laughs> right, at the same time, go ahead. <laughs> Have a good evening. Good evening. All right. <laughs>